Hello and welcome. This is the online version of our lab for experiment 10, cellular respiration. Unfortunately, we're not able to enter the lab this week, so we'll try to make up for it by trying to understand what the experiment is supposed to be like and also considering what could have happened in each of the steps. Before we go on with the video, I hope that you have already watched the video demonstration of the procedures. If you haven't, please go and access BioKML YouTube page and watch that demonstration video before coming back to this lesson. Now, if you've done that already, good job. And in this video, we're going to be going through the lab manual and also understand the steps. Now, before we go on with the procedures, let's have a look at the learning outcomes for this experiment. If you were able to do this experiment in person, you would be able to learn to organize the experiment setting for redox reaction procedures, conduct an experiment on redox reaction in cellular respiration, and also explain the biochemical processes in yeast suspension. Now, it seems that one and two is not able to be achieved this time, since you're not able to do this in person, but that's okay, we'll try to make up for it by learning about it in this way. Let's have a look at the introduction. Aerobic respiration re produces ATP from glucose. A cell breaks down the glucose. Most of the energy comes from the hydrogens of glucose are released by enzymes in glycolysis and the Krebs cycle. The high energy electrons of the hydrogen are carried to the electron transport chain or ETC, in the forms of NADH and FADH2. We can demonstrate these redox reactions by substituting NAD plus with methylene blue, which is a dye. In the oxidized state, this dye has a blue color. When it is reduced, it becomes white or light blue, as indicated below. Hence, the reduction has taken place. And as you see on the lab manual here, we have on the left side, methylene blue, which is a blue-greenish blue solution. When it is undergone reduction, it will become a decolorized methylene, which is white or light blue, and when it is oxidized, it goes back into a blue or greenish color. Now let's try to understand the concept behind this experiment before we go into the experiment procedures. What you're going to do in this experiment is you're going to see a respiration, not the whole process, but you're going to see part of it. Specifically, you're going to be looking at glycolysis. Now, if you remember, glycolysis is the process where we take one molecule of glucose and we're going to break it down into two molecules of pyruvate, which is a three carbon molecule. Now, this process is glycolysis and in this process, we're also going to gain two molecules of ATP. Now, I think I would use a purple color for ATP. From ADP, it's going to receive substrate level phosphorylation and become ATP. And this is our form of energy. Since this is a happy and quite an important thing, I'm going to highlight it in yellow. Now, remember that there are electrons that need to be donated away from glucose and the intermediates, intermediate substances before it becomes pyruvate. So who is going to receive those electrons? It's going to be this thing called NAD+. When it receives electrons, it's going to become NADH plus H+. Plus. And usually it will be two molecules of NAD plus that becomes two molecules of NADH. Now, I hope you remember this part in glycolysis. Also remember that there are a lot of enzymes involved, one for each step of glycolysis. So a lot of enzymes are involved. And that is 10 of them. Because there are 10 steps to glycolysis. In this experiment, we'll be substituting NAD plus or NADH with this thing called a methylene blue solution. So this methylene blue dye is used in place of 
NAD+. And during this experiment, we're going to see whether this methylene blue is being reduced or being oxidized. Speaking of which, before I go on with the rest of the lesson, let's have a go through what is oxidation and what is reduction. Oxidation and reduction. We know something is oxidized if it gains oxygen molecule. And we know it is reduced if it loses oxygen molecule. But if we're not thinking in terms of oxygen, if we're thinking in terms of electron or maybe hydrogen atoms, we could still describe a process as oxidation or reduction. Jadi kalau kita tidak melibatkan oksigen, macam mana kita mau ingat sama ada ini adalah oxidation ataupun reduction? So for this one, I give you the tip that if you're thinking in terms of electrons and hydrogen atoms, please remember oil rig. Okay, this is for electrons and hydrogen. Oil rig meaning oxidation is loss. Reduction is gain. So when we lose electron, that is oxidation. So lose electron is oxidation. And when we gain electron, that is redu reduction. Same thing with hydrogen. If you lose hydrogen, that means you are oxidized. And if you gain hydrogen, that means you are reduced. So, bahagian untuk gain ataupun lose oxygen, itu mudah untuk kamu ingat. Bahagian untuk gain or lose electron and hydrogen might be a bit more difficult to remember. So, I recommend you to remember oil rig. So, based on this, I'm just going to say that when methylene blue is being reduced, it's going to be white or light blue. And when it is being oxidized, methylene blue will be blue or greenish blue color. Now remember this when you watch the video demonstration again. Okay, let's go on to the procedures. As you scroll down, you will be able to see in the lab manual the list of apparatus and the list of materials that you will need for this experiment and we'll also have a look at the procedures and observation. Now let's have a very simple version of the procedures. Let's start with our three boiling tubes. So we get our three boiling tubes and we're going to label them as A, B, and C. So this is A, B, and C and then we're going to fill each boiling tube with 10 ml of yeast suspension. So I just draw like this and inside there, that is our yeast suspension. Now before we do anything else, we're going to take boiling tube C and put that in boiling water for 15, oh not 15, for 5 minutes. Boiling water, so boiling water is 100 degrees Celsius for 5 minutes. After boiling it for 5 minutes, we can move on to step number 5 in the experiment, which is we're going to add methylene blue into each of the boiling tubes. So we're going to add methylene blue. Okay, so tiga-tiga test tube, A, B, dan C, sekarang ditambah methylene blue. And then we're going to shake. Shake it very gently and then we're going to observe the color change. Now after shaking the first time, you should be able to observe the color. 
I'm just going to redraw it once again. I'm sorry if the drawings look a bit sloppy after every time. Okay, so this one would be right after mixing, they would all be a uniform color. And then after that, what we're going to do is we're going to incubate all of these boiling tubes in a water bath of 40 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes. After the 15 minutes, we're going to observe the color change again. And now the three boiling tubes should look like this. So after observing the color change after the first incubation, what we're going to do is we're going to place boiling tube B in boiling water. So now it's his turn to be in the boiling water. So this one in boiling water, which is once again 100 degrees Celsius. And we are going to keep it there for five minutes. After five minutes, we're going to plug all three test tubes or boiling tubes with a rubber stopper. And then we're going to shake them vigorously. After you're done shaking, you're going to observe the color change in each of those three test tubes. After you record the color change in the table, you can unplug the boiling tubes and then you can incubate them again. When we're incubating, we are going to put it in a water bath of 40 degrees Celsius for another 15 minutes. And after 15 minutes, we're going to shake it one more time and also observe the color change. After you've had a good look at the color change, you're going to look at table 10.1 and once again, record any changes that you see. Now, take note of if there is a color change between the before the first incubation, after the first incubation, after the vigorous shaking, and after the second incubation. After that, you would need to answer these questions in the lab manual. All right, that is it for the summary of the procedures. I would like you to go through the procedures once again. Baca ataupun tengok diagram ini sekali lagi ataupun tengok video demo sekali lagi. And while you're going through what is supposed to be done in the experiment, I want you to think about these things. What happens with each temperature change? So lepas setiap step tu, apa yang berlaku dalam boiling tube? Why do we use boiling water? What is being affected? By the boiling water. What inside the yeast is being affected by that boiling water? And why, when we choose to incubate the boiling tubes, why do we use 40 degrees Celsius? Why not any other temperature? Why not 37 degrees Celsius? We are observing the color changes, but what does the white or blue color of the methylene blue solution mean? Did any cellular respiration occur? Which type of cellular respiration took place in the boiling tubes? And which processes in cellular respiration are you observing? Is it the whole process or just one of the stages in cellular respiration? Bahagian ini untuk kamu fikir saja. So this is just an exercise for you to think about what's happening and try to understand what each step is trying to do. This part you don't need to write down anything. Just do this part in your head. The part that you need to write down is this part. So what you should do now is based on this video and on the procedure demonstration video that I tell you to watch in BioKML's YouTube, I want you to complete this table 10.1. So siapkan table 10.1. Uh, color tu boleh tulis sama ada white ataupun blue. And then I want you to answer these questions in the lab manual. So you can do this on a piece of paper. You can also do this digitally. It's up to you as long as you write down the answers somewhere. And then submit that work through the Google Classroom. And I will prepare a slot for you to submit your work. In tomorrow's lesson, during the Google Meet, we'll go through this once again. And I'll discuss the answers to the lab manual questions. I hope that's clear and all the best to your learning and I will see you again soon. Thank you and goodbye.